let's solve this and we're gonna graph all the possible solutions on a number line. So I think one of the best ways we can go about doing that is to start by making a table. So let's just start making a table of x values and we'll see which outputs will satisfy this inequality. So here it goes. We're gonna have x's here and then we're gonna have the absolute value of x here and I think we can pretty much figure out what's gonna happen. And there we go. So I'm gonna start with negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three. And so then when I take the absolute value of negative three, I get three. Okay, um, when I take the absolute value of negative two, I get two. Absolute value of negative one is one. The absolute value of zero is zero. And this is pretty straightforward, right? The absolute value of one is one. Absolute value of two is two. Absolute value of three is three. And so then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna say, well, that's less than two, and that's less than two, and that's less than two, and that's less than two. That's less than two, that's less than two, that's less than two. And then we'll come through here and say, well, I might have lied to you by accident. So let's switch pins, and we're gonna find the ones that are true, find the ones that are false, and that will dictate what we graph on the number line and what we don't. So three is less than two. Well, that's false, that's not gonna happen. Two is less than two, almost, but false. One is less than two, that's true. Zero is less than two, one is less than two, two is less than two, nope. Three is less than two, no. So then if I was to draw, a number line and put these numbers on it. Zero, one, two, three, four, even. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. I can graph which ones of these are solutions. And so we decided that zero was a solution. Cool. One is a solution. Negative one is a solution. Two is not a solution. Actually, let's let's get a little more detailed with this. Let's suppose my chart actually said, you don't have to write this down, but if my chart got a little more complicated, if it was to say like x and then the absolute value of x, and I was to have numbers like um, negative 2.1, negative 2, negative 1.9, We'll do those, and then we'll do the same thing over here on the positive end. So we'll have 1.9, 2, and 2.1, and then we'll do the same thing where we take the absolute value. The absolute value of negative 2.1 is 2.1, and that is less than 2. Oh, no, I don't think so. That's not true. So I will not graph negative 2.1 on my number line. Negative 2, we've already dealt with that, and that one's... That one's also false, so I'm just gonna write the word false there. We're just kind of doodling our ideas. And then if we put the absolute value of negative 1.9 less than two, we would have something that's true, actually, let me take that less than two out, and we'll say that's positive 1.9, that is less than two. Ah, sure enough, that is true. So I will graph the point negative 1.9 on my number line. What about negative 1.99? So the absolute value of negative 1.99, now I'm just experimenting here, that's 1.99 and that's less than two. How about negative 1.999? And that's, well, 1.999 and that is indeed also less than two. So we could get really close to negative two but we can't include it because that would be false. And similarly, we'd have 1.9 here, that's less than two. Two, less than two, um, I don't think so, nope. And, uh, 2.1 less than two, nope, I don't think so there either. So on either side of two, we can get really close to, but not include the number two, which is why we're gonna put an open circle on the number two, and everything else in, in the middle is going to be shaded. Okay, so the direction said, graph all the possible solutions on the number line, and what we have is correct. But I'm also gonna give an inequality solution to this. So, let me give you a couple different ways that it could be written. I'm gonna write that final answer, of course, with the graph, but also in purple here. So, I, what I've graphed is all the values of x that are less than two that are also greater than negative two. So, I'm gonna write that. x is less than two, and x is greater than negative two. And actually, the word and is, is really important here in this solution because and means it's where they intersect. So if I graphed all these and all these, then they would have met right here in the middle. 
There's another way that can that this can be written, and it's this. Negative 2 less than x less than 2. Perfectly okay to write it like that. I like to call that the sandwich method. We've sandwiched x between negative 2 and 2. We always use less thans here. Always, 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 always use less thans. There are crazy exceptions where we might want to use a greater than, but they're not worth our discussion right now. So always use a less than. Never use a greater than when you're making a sandwich. Always. There. I've said it. Now we're going to do the next problem. And when we do the next problem, we can do the same kind of idea here. And so we'll just actually do the same kind of idea here. Got too many markers in my hand. I'll throw one of them down. So x, absolute value of x. And what I want is something that's true this time for this that will cause me to graph it, which is what I wanted last time. But now this inequality symbol is pointing the other way. So negative 3, negative 2.5. Now I'm picking numbers a little more strategically. Negative 2.1. Negative 2, uh, negative 1.9. I'm just picking stuff that I think might work, okay? And then I'm going to do something similar here. 1.9, uh, 2, just 2, 2.1, and 3. So if I was to take the absolute value, I know I left off 2.5, but you get the drift. If I was to take the absolute value of each of these, then it basically makes them positive. So 3, 2.5, 2.1. 2, 1.9, 1.9, 2, 2.1, and 3. Okay, so greater than 2, greater than 2, greater than 2, greater than 2. I'm just writing things down. We'll assess the veracity of it. Veracity means truthfulness, by the way. It's a good SAT word. So I'm going to mark out everything that's wrong and check everything that's right. And uh, this is good. This is 2.5 is greater than 2, 2.1 is greater than 2, 2 is not greater than 2, but close. Uh, 1.9, no, 1.9, no, 2, no, 2.1, yes, 3, yes. Okay, so when I graph this on a number line, then, well, graph my number line, then we'll have um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we'll go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and then, I dropped that and caught it. Those hands, though. <laughs> All right, let's uh, graph the things that work. So negative 3 worked, right? Um, negative 2.5 worked. Negative 2.1 worked. Negative 2 did not. That's right at the border of what I wanted. What if I want to put a negative 4 in? So the absolute value of negative 4, absolute value of negative 4 is equal to 4, and that is indeed greater than 2. So sure, negative 4 would work. Negative 1 million? Negative 1 million becomes positive 1 million. That's greater than 2. So sure, I would graph this all the way this way. There it is. And the same thing happens over here. And we can see it. It starts at 2. This is a no, but it's almost 2, and then 2.1, and then 3, and then 4, and 5, and 6. So it goes like that. Okay. So, so far we've done two problems. Haven't finished this one quite yet. But we've done two problems. And uh, on the first problem, it was less than, and we shaded like this. And the second one is greater than, we're going to shade it like that. Okay, you, you'll get, catch the drift of what's happening here in a second. But let's go ahead and write it down the way we, we wrote the other one. So, uh, I used purple on the other one. Got to be really particular about this, right? So, we grabbed everything that was greater than 2. All right? We also grabbed everything that was less than negative 2. And I, I would love to use the word and here, but the word and really implies where they meet and they didn't meet. Like if I looked at this, I'd say, oh, this and this, and they, they don't meet. And the word and in a mathematical sense means graph where they meet. It means intersection. Well, there is no intersection here. So really the mathematical word is or. It's this or this. So either one of those is exactly what I'm looking for as a solution. Okay. So we're going to do the next two problems, and I'm going to go ahead and do them, and then I will tell you how to actually solve problems that involve absolute value inequalities. All right, so for this next one, we have the absolute value of x plus 1, and it is less than 2, and I'm just going to use some of the patterns we've noticed so far. Absolute value of x plus 1, and it is less than 2, and I just want to know which x values work for this, and I could probably guess some stuff like 0. 0 plus 1 is less than 2. Yeah, cool, yeah. I'll be shading the number 0. Um, 
Uh, one and a half, one and a half plus one is two and a half, two and a half is less than two. No, I won't be shading one and a half. Um, let's draw a number line. And um, zero, one, two, three, four, that should be sufficient on that side. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. I had room, so I put it. Okay, so here's the final answer that we're about to write that's not quite exactly right. Um, I know because it's less than, and I'm looking at the example above it on the paper, the very first one we did, because it's less than, we're gonna be shading inside, and that's gonna be one of these where I'm gonna to have to put the word and in the middle. So I'm gonna have two solutions, and I'm gonna connect them with the word and, okay? So my final answer is something and something else, and it's gonna be something where I shade like in between two numbers. Well, what two numbers do I shade in between? Well, if we look back at the first example, we had x is less than 2. Well, let's do that. Let's actually just kind of drop the bars, which sounds like I'm wrapping. I'm not. We're just going to drop those absolute value bars and have that. Now, I'm, I'm looking at the example above it where we originally had um, the absolute value of x less than 2, and we had two solutions. One of them was this. The other one was that. So, uh, oops, that. So the other solution happens when we drop the bars. So let's do that. Whoop, wrong color. <laughs> We're gonna drop the bars. So drop the bars, turn that inequality symbol around, and then change that sign. I'm kind of looking at patterns here. I drop the bars, turn the symbol around, change the sign. There it is. Okay. So we, then we'll just solve those, solve them both, and it's really gonna be as easy as you think. So subtract one from both sides, cancel those, x is less than one, cool, got it. Um, then we will subtract one from both sides here, cancel, cancel, x is greater than negative three, got it. And so actually, that is my answer. So final answer, x is less than one, and x is greater than negative three, so let's shade that. And I hope we notice, remember, remember the problem above it, when it was less than, we went like this. There's a lot of little things to remember on these, and we're gonna write all that down in just a minute. So don't panic if you're like, oh, I don't know when to do this and when to do that. You got it. So there's that one, greater than negative three. And the, the and problems are the ones where there is an intersection in between. So there it is right there. And that is the final answer right there. So let's do the one beside it. And it's gonna be the same idea, only the inequality symbol is turned around the other way. And once we've done a couple of them, we'll begin to realize what the pattern is, and we'll go from there. So, the one beside it says, let me set this down, same problem, only now it's greater than, so we'll draw a number line, zero, one, two, three, four, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and we've spent a lot of time on the first four problems, but that kind of helps us understand the pattern. So, we have a final answer already in our head. Because it's greater, it's gonna go out. And as I say that, I'm thinking of the very first example we did that had a greater than in it, and it went out like this. It started with a greater than, and it goes out. That is an or issue. Now, there's an inequality symbol, or there's a mathematical symbol that represents or. I'm not gonna go there in this problem right now. The way we get it is we drop the bars and solve. And then drop the bars, switch the symbol, change the sign. Drop the bars and solve. Drop the bars, switch the symbol, change the sign, solve it. Drop the bars and solve. Drop the bars, switch the symbol, change the sign, and solve it. That's gonna be it. We'll subtract one from both sides. X greater than one, okay. Um, subtract one from both sides. This should look very familiar to what we've already done. We have that. So final answer is x is greater than one or x is less than negative three. And then we'll set, we'll graph it. I said we're gonna solve it. We've already solved it. It's gonna go out on either end. So we're gonna have a negative three and over and positive one and over. And so now we've kind of we've done four problems. And so let me kind of reiterate what's happened and we'll write down the process for solving an absolute value inequality. Let's erase this. Okay, so in your notes, there's this little phrase that says, when solving an absolute value inequality. So when solving an absolute, I'm writing sloppy, value inequality. And we haven't had to encounter this yet, but we will. Um, first, 
Step one, isolate the absolute value bars. That's actually gonna happen on the notes. In just a few minutes, we're gonna to have to do that on uh, number four in our notes, okay? Uh, number two, we're gonna have two inequalities. Set up two inequalities. Now there are other ways of doing it. If you're looking at other videos, I used to teach this different actually. Um, I taught it in a way where you would, like if it was less than you do it one way, if it's greater than you do it the other way, and it's confusing. So, all right, here are the two ways you do it. Drop bars and solve. And when I say drop bars and solve, I don't mean start rapping. Here's the second way. Drop bars, flip the symbol, change sign, and solve. Okay, drop the bars, solve. It's good to go. Drop the bars, flip the symbol, change the sign, and solve. Two different things. And then step three is graph, basically. Graph, but, but here's the deal. If the original problem, once you had the bars alone, was a less than, then your problem's gonna look like this when you graph it. It's gonna be one of those where you've shaded on the inside. Now, it, it might be less than or equal to, so it would look like that. Let me make sure that one looks like an open circle. There we go. Maybe, uh, this is gonna be confusing. Let's do that. If it was greater than, then it's gonna go outward. And then when I'm writing my solutions, I'll say this one's an and, and that one's an or. So we have two different types of problems right there. Now, if you put the little, if you fill the circles in, then you would have the same thing like if it was equal to. We'll, we'll deal with that later. So that's basically the most simplified version of how to do these. So we're gonna go through several examples and you'll see what we mean.